Welcome to the Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back to another edition of Rock the Stage Show, the Trigger, back with you on Sunday night. And we are back in our sweet lane tonight. So we've had several great guests. <clears throat> See, and there you go. The frog jumps in on Sunday night. There it is. But we have a lot of great guests for you saying, but we're going to go back into the media area, the branding area. This is where we love to live, right? This is the things we love to talk about. And tonight we're going to go over the big pond. We're going to Wales, international, rock star. This gal knows her media stuff. Well, let me ask you a question here today because promotions is kind of a sticky thing. Some people love PR. They eat it up. They love it. And a lot of people, they're uncomfortable with the idea of pushing yourself out to be known, to be recognized in a unique space. And you think you're going to get pigeonholed. You think you're going to get labeled. You think people may not even like what you do for PR because some of it's kind of crazy, right? So tonight we're going to go into that area. We're going to discuss all the promotional fun. What does it mean to have a great brand and have your promotional marketing plan match it in a way that people will actually want to follow you, like you, hire you, maybe even bring you back for even more. Today, we have a great guest coming on our way because we're going to get deeply into this with Luana Rivera. Now, she is joining us from Dauntless PR to discuss all the things visible, credible, and where she gets her incredible passion and drive to help others reach their, their potential. And here's the funny thing. She's a former actress. And we have a secret to talk about in just a little while. But first, Luana, welcome to Rock the Stage Show. Thank you so much. It's really great to be here. I love doing these international shows because the time zones, the setting, it's always different. So we got to have our coffee in the morning here in the States to make sure we are rocking. <laughs> <laughs> so you have been in a diverse career area. And you have landed now on promotions in PR. But before you got in that, I tease it up. You've been an actress. Yeah, but you I weren't see, just I any old actress. You were a scream queen actress. Yes. Yeah, that's so much fun. <laughs> How did you get into that? Right. Growing up, I was the, the shy, most shy, most socially awkward child that you can imagine. I did everything I could to be invisible, to blend in. So how I ended up being an actress, well, <laughs> I, now, had, um, I started off, I, I don't, I can't explain why, but ever since I was a child, I just had felt this pull to be in the spotlight. And I couldn't understand it because I wanted nothing. I, I didn't, didn't want anything to do with it because it terrified me at the time. And then gradually I started taking steps to get more and more visible. To start with, it was dancing. And then when I went in my 20s, I had a real, I had about a decade where I was feeling called to act and I was terrified of it. And I kept pushing it away and I kept drinking more and drinking more and hoping that would shut away that, that pesky voice that was calling me to do something scary. And so I lost myself in alcohol and partying for probably a decade oh my until, <clears throat> until I got pregnant. And then of course, I couldn't use, I, I couldn't escape these yeah. thoughts anymore. And that's when I went into acting was when I was, when I was pregnant. So I, I had an experience that gave me so much drive and it was, I was getting um, acting coaching mm -hmm. and the coach said to me, you just don't have it. And I remember sitting there at eight months pregnant emotional hormonal <laughs> going what what do you mean i don't have it that that's why i'm in these classes because oh what is goodness. it i'm here to learn and she said no you just don't have it and then she put on something a monologue i delivered on the screen and she made me watch it the whole time she was just sitting there saying 
it's not good, is it? You're just not good, are you? You're not good. But she wouldn't give me any sort of constructive feedback. So I did what anybody would do. I mean, I walked out of the lesson in tears, thinking my dreams had been shattered. And I stayed down for roughly a week or two. And then I decided I was going to get a team together, a team of coaches mm -hmm. in acting. And I was going to set up an acting academy. So that's what I did. <laughs> and then because she told me that, it just gave me so much drive as well. And I thought, I'm going to make it happen. Within weeks after I had my baby and then within weeks afterwards, I got my first paid acting role. <laughs> so that that first acting role um, was so, so... So it's very interesting that even though you wanted to be in the limelight, you couldn't be in the limelight because you so just like i said in the opening teaser is there's this battle with pr and wanting to be out front some people want it but when they actually get it they don't like it they freak out they shut down others yeah. like you are like yes no but so what's the fear what 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 drove you do you think to have that battle of not going for it earlier in life because i was absolutely terrified of judgment of criticism of other people's opinions and it took me well i'm 43 now and i i feel like it's only in the past year or two that i've genuinely just not not cared i went through a time period as well where, where i had to tell everybody just how much i didn't care because it was so important to me that everybody knew i didn't care i went through that stage as well and mm -hmm. um, but that that was the biggest thing it was like i i always knew that i was meant to be in the spotlight that i had something to give that I needed to create impact and i had no idea why or how that was going to manifest test itself and eventually i just started challenging myself more and more <laughs> uh, right the, i called i called my business dauntless pr yeah because of, because of what i call the dauntless spirit and that's something that i i, I developed when age 14 i remember the first time i did it when i thought this thing really scares me so i'm gonna run towards it and that's right. what i i did and that's when it really hit me right this is my purpose now I've, I've got to get visible so having gone through that yourself has that helped you a lot working with people to help them build their pr build out their social build out their brand identity has that helped you because you know the fear you yeah. you you know that firsthand yes completely completely because when people say to me they're terrible they want to do it but they're scared or they've got doubts i get it I completely get it. And I also know that you can do all of the mindset exercises and all of that. And there's only one way to really get through it. And that is by doing it. That is by doing it over and over and over again until it becomes your new normal. It's kind of embracing that discomfort, but also so, being. Yeah, go sorry. on. Go on. No, no, um, go on, go on. Also being aware of, because you mentioned earlier when people sometimes do go into the spotlight yeah. and then they're like, oh, I don't like it. <laughs> but the, the brain is naturally going to try and talk us down. It's going to shift us in. And usually the people who have got to the level where they are getting into the spotlight, yeah. they've done a ton of personal development work. So those, I call them the visibility goblins. Those goblins have to work harder than um, just the usual give negative thoughts or right. you know make you doubt yourself because we can overcome that so sometimes they have to work in a way that's sneaky and that can sometimes be boredom or disinterest well or and shiny objects well, well and that often plays into and again there's a big tug of war on this concept mm -hmm. of niching down mm -hmm. in one lane because people like like you said they're nervous so instead of picking in one I'll keep doing multiple things so no one ever thinks that I'm stuck on myself or something like that. There, there's this thing about wanting to be in one lane and knocking it out. People want to keep doing multiple things. But do you agree that you should be one lane, one niche? Or do you think, as some of my colleagues, they're in three categories? Right. I think what's really important is so I'm multi passionate. 
Um, but the what I the way it works for me, and that's because everything I do comes to one thing, and that word is dauntless. Everything I do is embodies the dauntless brand. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was to do something that was suddenly completely away from that, uh, you know, away from the dauntless spirit. So, so let's say I was going to do something very corporate, for example. Right. Well, yeah. that, that's, that's not me. That's not my brand. So <laughs> that would be a bit, a bit jarring. But I can do PR. I can do acting. I can <clears throat> write books as long as they're all embodying that, that brand. So that's the main thing for me but i i get what you're saying because i also see people skipping from one thing to another not wanting to commit yeah and i think that's self-sabotage a lot of the time and i definitely did it myself too well yeah and it's it's it's, it's very common now yeah part of what i'm coaching these days because we're both in a similar lane is with media which we both love media is you are now the brand not what you yeah. sell not what you do per much you mm -hmm. are the brand and a lot of people are wrestling with the idea, I'm the brand, because they don't know what to do with the idea that they are centric to all their success. How do you help people with that? There's a lot of fears around what if I, what if people think I'm up myself or what if people think I've got too much ego and that yes. sort of thing. <laughs> I think with any PR in general, people really underestimate the emotional support that they need because so, it's like when you get visible, all of your shadows show up, like it, it shows everything <laughs> up. And this yes. is this is definitely one of them. And it's it's a way that people tend to hold themselves back. I always try and give give a clear definition there where <clears throat> confidence and arrogance are not the same thing Ooh, go deeper on that please go deeper <laughs> on that so confidence is knowing that you're good at something is owning that you're good at that is talking about that because it is our duty i believe that it is our duty that if we've got a skill to get in front of our people. And I actually think it's more ego-based not to do that because then we're putting ourselves ahead of our people. That's the way I see it. Wow. Um, but, you know, on, on the other hand, arrogance to me is creating this false impression of who you are because you want people to think of you as being on some th some level that you're not. Yep. Um, but but knowing that you're good at something and amplifying that that's not arrogance that's being honest that's truthful in, in well that's opinion. owning it i mean again that's that's owning, owning it, it. yes i and... love to see people owning it <laughs> well and then when it comes to the promotional side there is an awkward feeling again i've been coaching helping people brand market themselves the hardest thing is for me to promote myself so, oh, isn't it always? <laughs> <laughs> isn't the worst We've feeling like rich? We've always got so much to say about what other people should be doing, haven't we? Yes, and then 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 when you stop and say, "Rich, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Why?" And they're like, uh, "Because I don't know know what to do with myself." You do need somebody else to take you and take you to the next level, right? Right. I go through my process as a client. So my team have two versions of me. They've got founder Luana, and then they've got client Luana. Both are very different. Yes. They have to know which one I'm talking to. You know, like if, if we're on a call or something, I'll say like client Luana here. <laughs> and, and and that's a tightrope for many people that I know, the work from actors, directors, the songwriters. There's that thing of this is me, but then this is what my team does for me. And they do take you to another level, but you have to release that. You have to trust your PR team or uh, your leader. You, you have to trust them that they're not making it look like an idiot. That is everything. That is everything. And this is why, like, I, I would never, ever, pr like, put anybody under any kind of pressure or something like that during the sales process. I want everybody to be certain and to be coming in saying right i'm going to trust you because if if they don't 
what happens is that they need so much reassurance that that takes away from the time we could be pitching, you know, and we right. need to get explosive results. So therefore, we are very insistent about building that trust beforehand. Because, again, they're going to speak on your behalf. They're going to try to get you the media coverage, the talk shows. They're going to try to get in the press. Yeah. And they have to do it in a way that they are confident of you. Completely, completely, yeah. Because because you can't land the gig, step up, and then be different than what your publicist or PR team said you were. You have to show up as completely. what they said you are. Yes, yes. And being and on that note as well, you know, the first thing that we do is really, really get to know our clients on a deep level every bit of their messaging, what they want, how they want to be perceived. And we do that by obviously talking to the client, but also we low-key stalk them. <laughs> <laughs> we read their books, we binge watch <laughs> all of their stuff. But when it comes to the, the PR side, one of the other things that people are wrestling with now is social media is driving the bus. I play in real media, radio, television, print, so do you. Now, you have a massive media, social media following. You do. Talk to us about the difference, the two lanes. Can they coexist or should you lean on one, only lean on the other? How do you do social media, real media? Oh, what a great question. And they are very different. And turn in the right way they both complement each other. Like when you create synergy mm -hmm. between the two, because it's like the traditional media, that's where you're going to get in front of huge audiences. Yes. The you, you can be interviewed for 10 minutes and reach millions, you know, with yes. traditional media, where with the socials, that's going to take a lot of work and dedication. <laughs> so the traditional media is for getting in front of wide audiences and developing that mass omnipresence where people really get to know you. You're the one constantly showing up whenever your topic is mentioned. They become familiar with yeah. your name, which creates, like, I, I, I'm a bit of a psychology geek. Like, they create the mere exposure effect where the more we're exposed to somebody, even if our initial reaction is neutral, the more we get to like them and trust them just purely from seeing them more. Yes, yes, yes. The, the socials are a huge key as well. Like some people come to us and they want to bypass the socials completely. That can be done as well. That's a, But the most effective strategy is to marry the two. Because yes. the socials, it, it's like they're closer. That's where you have more communication. So you shine a spotlight on yourself in traditional media, you attract the people into your socials, and then on your, your socials also need to be active. And that's where you have actual conversations where it feels like you're closer, like that's an already warm audience. So that's what's going to bring more tangible results. Yeah. And just so people understand that the mass media, the print, radio, TV will send you out like a blitz. But the social media allows you to go personal and dive down deeper. And when you learn to do the dance between the two, it's extremely powerful, right? That's it. That's it. Exactly. It's knowing how to work them both together so that they both complement each other. And you're bringing... Because some people, you know, they, they just go on to, say, a TV interview when they think, oh, that's it, job done. But they could be utilizing that so much within their marketing. And I always say as well, the best time for PR is when people have already got their marketing strategy and their sales strategies in place, because then PR amplifies that. Whereas it's not going to create something that isn't there. It's not going to fix anything. It's going to amplify what they're already doing. So the sales component, which I've talked to a lot of people, and again, I, I'm, I'm horrible at that. End. I'm, I'm horrible on the sales side. Um, <laughs> but when you do the media the brand, the face, the person gets known, then they want to buy something. If you don't have that ready to go now, you're missing the financial funnel right away, right? That's it. Like, it's not going to do you any harm. It's only ever going to do you good. But if you, you know, to invest heavily in PR, then I would definitely recommend having these things in place so that you're 
getting return on your investment and that's not going to happen purely from being in the media it comes from attracting them into if you're not you know if somebody doesn't want to be on the socials that's okay but then they need their website email list whatever it is whatever their funnel is they need that to be ready and it's not like um because some people think it's like an explosive effect as well and it's not an explosive effect but a slow burn it's a slow rising yeah. um it's like you look back and you go oh my conversion rates improved a lot in the past few months like, i yeah. suddenly feel like i'm wolf of wall street but i haven't changed anything but that's because of the added credibility if we're going to work with somebody these days we're googling them we're googling them so we <laughs> have to always be thinking about what's coming up on that google page so so when you work with somebody where do you start do you disassemble them first or do you just start with where they're at and take it further yeah we start with where they're at and we take it further we look for any disconnections any holes in their messaging any parts anything credibility wise that they might have that's not doing themselves any good like um i'll give you a quick example sometimes people will have social profiles with only like 20 followers because they've set it up but they haven't done anything with it and that's you know it's it's not that nobody's interested it's just that they never rolled with it they never yes. put any but it's better not to have those because mm -hmm. People are going to go, oh, well, they've only got 17 followers on Instagram or whatever, but that's because that's not where their attention is. So the best thing right. is to remove that, either put the effort into building it so that regardless of what platform people look you up on, that they're all bustling or get rid of the platform if you're not going to put that effort in. That's just that's just one example of the. Well, no, but that's a great example because often they're trying to do every platform possible. And yeah, it's not possible. Yeah. So I, I, I coach people, do three or four platforms and kill it on those platforms. Let everything else go. Let them know this is where you find me. And the other thing they've often miss is in the descriptions, in the show notes, or in the bio right. portion, they don't fill it out. Right. <laughs> but sometimes it takes somebody from the outside to go, wait. And other things as well, like, sometimes people will we've already spoken a bit about names like yeah. sometimes people will spell their names slightly differently and they mustn't yeah <laughs> oh bond trigger has been butchered so many times that's why trigger was partly that's part of the reason trigger was born it's my personality it's my energy and i'm always popping off and having a good time but bond yeah. trigger has been shattered so many times <laughs> that i get emails and letters with two t's you know three e's it's it's crazy and you have to find a way to set that apart so either a stage name and nickname because you don't want your name to get butchered and lost and then it means nothing to you yeah yeah exactly the other thing is as well is if somebody has a name that's really common or if they share a name with somebody who's mega famous then yeah. they're going to struggle with that first page of google if somebody's just Googling oh yeah their name. so you know when things like that happen it's like right what stage are you in your business journey if they're just starting out then we would advise them well you know just shift the spelling slightly if they yeah. haven't already done a lot of building but yeah. if they've already established themselves well it's a whole different ball game there isn't it but they definitely do need to be consistent with how how they're spelling it every time what is you know when it comes to the media side of things i train media interviews i train you how to shine on camera and shine on stage how much of that do you get into to help them know how to look behave sound bites all that stuff do you know what we put a big focus on this because i always say nobody should ever ever practice on any actual interview <laughs> even it like because i've spoken to people before and they've said oh, i'm just going to go on this little podcast that's only got a few viewers and i'm going to go on there to practice no like that no <laughs> no just no that's really disrespectful <laughs> just say no the audience just just no build your 
confidence, build your skills first, and then go on these interviews. So you're never going to be perfect. Never think, oh, I have to be at a certain level, but do make sure that you have practiced in advance. And the way we do this with our clients is fairly unique, actually, because we, we have a course that they run through to learn all the techniques. Yep. But then we also put them through a dauntless roast session. So this also comes from my background is in acting. So as an actor, you always have to be, whatever happens, you have to be ready for it. Yeah. And it's not, it's, it's not so much about knowing what to do, but it's about having our nervous systems be prepared and doing the right things so that when the unexpected happens, our habit naturally goes to the right place rather than freezing or suddenly blurting out the wrong thing or whatever happens when we get uncomfortable. Right. So that's why we do these rose sessions. And what we do is they're mock interviews, but with a twist. They are never going to experience an interview quite like that because <laughs> we, we hire in actors to play the part of the host from hell. Now that host from hell is going to give them a grilling and that is, that is going to, their aim is going to be to raise their defenses. Okay, that's their goal. They've got the green light to do and say whatever they want for that to happen. So we always say, hey, if you're, oh. you're going to get offended, just don't come. If you're up for it. But it's, it's done in a safe space. Yes. There's, they're not recorded. It's only us that are on. Afterwards, we come on and we let them know exactly what they did great, what could be improved next time. So it's always really practical. It's all done with such great, like it's all great fun and banter, you know. Um, I love so that. Know. I've never heard of anyone else doing that where you intentionally have the interview from hell. <laughs> it's but so I love fun. the idea because it's going to happen. Even um, our most, even our most experienced speakers have come on and they've said, wow, I didn't realize I needed that, but I did. <laughs> because there's always a way. And then for the beginners, yeah. well, it's, it's terrifying for some to come to these rows, you know, for one or two, they might just want to watch and then they might just want to do a few minutes. And, but either way, you know, they know that they're in a safe space yes. that there is only good is going to come out of it and then they're going to be ready for whatever it is happen that happens like you know 99.9 .9 of interviews is going to be a lovely friendly chat but who yes. knows you might get an interview with um Piers Morgan one day who knows <laughs> you know you have to be ready and we have we have had clients on shows where that are that are renowned for yeah. having challenging hosts and we've i i genuinely i've watched our clients on these with tears on my eyes because i know what they were like before they started coming to our own session oh. and yeah. how they handled themselves then live live on tv where they're being grilled by the hosts now the the other thing about the new interview area one of the areas that's very interesting you touched on it earlier but People are now hungry to get to know the real you. There is a personal oh, desire to be more and more authentic during interviews, uh, just random conversation when they stick a mic in your face. Yeah. They want to get to know the real person now. And right. I'm trying to help people understand you need to lean into that without breaking Please. personal boundaries, personal things that you don't want to share. Not everything oh. is open air, but there is a hunger to get to know you, yeah. not the celebrity you. That's it. That's it. People aren't interested anymore in that perfectly polished version. People are like, there's been so many fakers and liars around as well. And now as well with, with the rise of AI, which, you know, AI is a great thing when it's used in the right way. Um, yeah. But it has resulted in some disconnect like with things being written by, by AI and all of that stuff. Like yep. sometimes people are just hungry for that person's words, you know, that they're real words spoken in the way that they would share it 
without all of this like images and stuff is another one you know without all of the heavy editing yeah. so people just want the real version of you and i'm not you know i'm not saying that i don't edit things ever i do but th there's a there's a limit to it like people do want to see the real you and that's what is effective these days yeah and people want want to get to know people on a human level and what makes them tick yes like they, they want to know about their past experiences like the, the bad and the good well doesn't that take the pr up higher too when when you ask the personal questions and they're willing to re share it you know we're talking about pr we're talking about branding we're talking about getting people to get more notice stronger when you share those personal stories you go up because people see you as a real person that they can know like and trust right yeah, completely completely so why are we avoiding that why do you think this is hard for some people to put this into their pr plan i i, I think there's many that do but many are fighting putting yeah. the real self out there they really really do and i think it's because people want to create this illusion of being perfect and they're afraid of repelling people with their the things about them that, that are imperfect when in fact nobody is perfect people don't want that perfection like I, I find perfectly polished to be really boring i want to see depth in people i want to know what makes them tick i want to know what makes them weird what's weird about them like yeah. <laughs> like I, I just i find people so interesting when they're unique when they've got something different to say and sometimes people and i've definitely been one of these people as well who just does, didn't I, if I look back, I didn't have the confidence, like when I was telling you about my acting and how I, I made that ridiculous shift. Why? It wasn't because it was because I wasn't confident in myself. I put somebody else's opinion first. I was looking at advice and taking that on face value rather than going, well, does this really apply to me? And there's opinions all over the place. Like well, there are opinions all, all, yeah. So let's go there for a second because your publicist is going to have an idea. Your PR team is going to have an idea. You're going to have an idea. Your spouse is going to have an idea. Yeah. Who do you listen to when everyone's trying to tell you how to brand you? Yourself. Yourself. So it's free. Always listen to your own opinions and to that of your ideal clients and everybody else. look objectively like even as a pr team if i say something to my clients that they don't resonate with or that they don't feel is right i want them to tell me and i want them to explain to me why so that i can get to know them better mm -hmm. and then i know that that wasn't the right way because that nobody's going to know your brand like you no because so, I've had times in my career because I, I am Mr. Excitable. I have a lot of fun. I crack jokes. Yes. Same. And I am the energizer buddy. I love this. And people are like, can you just be a little bit more professional about this, Rich? And I'm like, so I've, I, I've, I've tried that. And then people go, you know, there's something missing. Your, 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 your spark is kind of gone. And I'm like, because this is painful man i'm trying to like rein everything in but i'm gonna go yeah come on let's have a rock and roll great conversation being true to yourself is so important with all the voices screaming at you when you build your brand when you grow your brand you've got to be you at some part of this right 100 percent. and i can resonate so much with what what you were saying then because i've had the same luana don't you think you should just tone it down just tone it down a bit be more professional right when this Who is what makes we can't have fun in business like where's that idea come from because i don't like it i'm not buying it <laughs> well, well, yeah and then it's becoming uniform with everyone else instead of being unique and standing out yeah. and your uniqueness everyone's right. unique in their own way but when you find your uniqueness that's part of the pr trick yeah. part of the pr trick is to amplify that uniqueness so people know that's them that's them that's them there's only one of them <laughs> and that's them right yes 
hundred percent, hundred percent. It's it's really, really so important. The most important thing, I would say. What's it like when you're working with somebody and you have those aha moment when they're trying to find what their thing is and you finally land on it and you say, this is it. And you see them smile. You see them go, that is it. We got it. We found the, the secret sauce. What's it like when you have them smile like that and own it's it? Such an incredible moment. Like there's one that I can think of in particular um, who this she's an incredible woman she helps women over 40 to get pregnant and um she had been trying a few things before and nothing had really clicked and i just remember having this conversation with her about why what what why there was a disconnect in the messaging why it wasn't working why she was trying so hard and, and wasn't getting the results and it's like all of a sudden everything just just clicked i could see her body changing her face changing and then she went and actioned that and her messaging shifted completely into and all it came down to was she started speaking from the heart more than what she was being told to do. Yeah, and it, it's fun to see the light bulb go on the client when you know you got them to the next level because that's what we all want to do. We all want to go to the next level. Yes. And no matter what we say, whether we like it or not, promotion PR is part of the next level. You have mm -hmm. to get that machine working for you. Yeah, completely, completely. So we're going to go and look at your website here. Look at this. Ooh. You've got a website. People are going to scan that QR code right now, but tell us what are we going to find there? So there's a page that is really, really useful for anybody who's wondering if PR could be a good move for them. It's creatively called Is PR For You? <laughs> so head on over to that. And if you just give that a read, then that'll show you whether PR would be a good move for you right now or not. And if so, then it'll guide you through what the next steps are to see if Dauntless are the right ones for you, you know, or whether you should be with a different agency. Now, so, um, someone's going to ask, do you do international work? Or are you only on the UK uh, part of the world? Oh, what a great question. And yes, we work internationally. So this comes back to, again, when I was an actress, I was in the States a lot. I was in Australia. I was traveling around all over the world. So that's how I built a lot of my contacts. So we work on an international level and we only work with those who are happy to get press from anywhere in the world because it can come from absolutely anywhere, you know? Luana, what would be the best piece of advice you give to somebody? They call you up, they email you, and they say, I need help with PR. What's your first bit of advice as we wind down here today? Well, the first thing I'd want to understand is why. Like, what what do you want to get out of it? What what do you want to achieve? Like, <clears throat> and on that note, I also want to say that when you go into the press, the one most important thing you can do is go in with the energy of helping people, of sharing a message of giving value of creating impact and of trusting that all of those other things that you want the leads the sales everything that builds your business just trust that that's going to come as a result of you just genuinely giving value because that really shifts the energy of a person but if your energy is all i want to get then it's going to be off where if you go with the energy of giving and creating an impact because the the re you'll know all about this. Like We'll never really know the true extent of the impact that we can create. And isn't that so exciting? It is. It is so exciting to know that what we're doing here can go anywhere. And amazing things can happen with the information you've shared with our crowd, with, with the way that people are going to go check out your website. Anything is possible. And it's not pushy. It's not sales. It's fun and informative. Exactly. And we have to, you know, what blows my mind is just knowing that we're never really going to know the true extent of our impact either. No. It, but how many times have you like read something and, and you've gone, ah, oh, but you've never contacted that person or, right. you know, even look them up. So we, we just have to trust that those things are happening. We'll never know the true extent or 
what we've been teaching and then that's been passed on to family of the generations it's actually really mind-blowing it is the domino effect that we will never see or never know we'll never know but we know that it's there it's there absolutely yeah. luana thanks for being our guest here today you gave us a boatload of information and i'm not going to ask you to do the scream queen because you, you 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 might blow up the microphones and things like that. But thank you for being with us tonight on Rock the Stage Show. This has been so much fun. Thank you for having me on. Luana, and again, Dauntless PR is the name of the company. You want to make sure you remember that because they're here to help you, and they are international. But that part about being authentic, being real, not pushing yourself, you don't have to sell yourself. There's a lot of people I've worked with and talked with over the years that they think they have to sell, sell, sell. And your publicist will sell you for you. They will do the work of promoting you and getting you out there. The trick is for you to relax. And like Luana was saying is just be you, give the information and shine. And that's going to do it for tonight's edition of Rock the Stage Show. We thank you for being here. Remember, 7 o'clock every Sunday night, we go live with the show. You can join the chat on YouTube. Every week we have a premiere party. Get in the chat box and ask us questions, dialogue along. And we're on PPN, the Public Place Network. We're taking a little break from them for the summer because PPN is going to have 2.0 coming out very soon. Bigger reach, new way of doing things on their service. And remember, we're in 17 countries worldwide now with Rock to Stage Shield. We'll see you back here at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Sunday night, for another edition of Rock to Stage Shield.